Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Why do they do it? Why do Academy Award winners Ron Howard and Tom Hanks keep making these silly Dan Brown movies? After seeing the trailer for Inferno, the third outing in the confoundingly profitable series, I wasn't gonna rule out that some sort of deal with the devil was involved. This past week, not having much of a memory of the previous two films, I watched them both back to back in advance of seeing this new one, and let me tell you, if you ever get a chance to watch all three movies in succession like that, eh, just put your head in an oven instead. Each one of these films contains the same infuriating premise, that erudite professor Robert Langdon, played by Tom Hanks, is called into action to follow a series of outlandish and convoluted historical clues to unravel a mystery that's more complicated than it needs to be, racing against time in a European setting in the company of a pretty brunette assistant while being pursued slash assisted by multiple people or groups with their own competing agendas. And I'll tell you that, with the entire series fresh in my mind, that Inferno is actually the best of the three. But of course, that's not saying much. Inferno has the best cinematography and production design of the three films, making it the prettiest to look at, and ironically, on the smallest budget. Now, going back to look, I'm shocked to discover that the Da Vinci Code cost $125 million, by the way. Now, where the heck did that money go? Go back and look at that movie and... Actually, never mind, don't. Inferno also has the best version of Robert Langdon, one who starts out the film in a hospital bed, physically and mentally devastated from a terrible attack, and thus unable to get his bearings right away. Inferno also has the best high stakes. In every film, Langdon's being hunted down, but in Da Vinci Code, he's just trying to solve one murder and discover a long, hidden, mysterious secret. In Angels and Demons, he's trying to save the lives of a few missing cardinals, but in Inferno, Langdon bears an incredible responsibility. A madman has created a virus that, if released, will wipe out half of the world's population. And as the trailer and opening scene make very clear, that dude is dead. So Langdon has to find a big old plastic bag full of death before it explodes and kills half the world. And he's got to do it with a nasty head wound and amnesia and a head full of horrifying apocalyptic visions to boot. So already we're in good shape here. Much better setup than the previous two outings. But unfortunately, the central conceit is the same old ridiculous Dan Brown hunting down all the clues crap. And it throws all credibility out the window because anyone with half a brain knows if you had an aerosol bomb that sprays a deadly virus into the air, you'd just throw it in a dumpster behind a Walmart and call it a day. No one would ever find it. What you wouldn't do is hide it somewhere historically significant and then reverse engineer a bunch of coded clues right to it, then keep the first clue in your pocket. You know, just to be cute. Or, I guess he left it behind so one of his acolytes could follow the clues to finish what he started, but, but even that doesn't make sense. If you set a bomb and you're the only person who knows where the bomb is and then you kill yourself, Game over, dude. In fact, why not just blow up the bomb as soon as you made it? Why take the time to hide it somewhere, set a timer for three days, and then make a bunch of clues? Ah, forget it. Because there'd be no movie, is the answer. That is not the movie's first lapse in credibility, but it is its largest. All throughout this mystery, people know things that they couldn't possibly know, and such instances just keep stacking up. However, once you get past the credibility of the central premise of the story, and you may not, but if you do, you can actually appreciate the stuff here that is actually pretty good. Hanks still does plenty of rapid-fire explaining of history and culture, and it's as irritating as it's ever been. But that's not all he does here. He really takes you along with him on his journey back from madness and into clarity in a way that I found compelling. Also compelling are his relationships with the various women in his life. From an old flame he crosses paths with at the World Health Organization, who may or may not be dirty, to his new protege played by Felicity Jones. And I especially like the way he charms a museum docent who clearly knows him when he has no memory of her. Ben Foster makes a compelling villain in his brief screen time. And the greatest character in the movie played by Irfan Khan, well, the less said about him the better, but he is just full of surprises. All in all, I found myself carried along rather well by Inferno, much to my surprise. While its story hinges on a central plan that is as stupid as it is deadly, it builds to a climax with actual weight and generated enough excitement and suspense to fill a medium bag of popcorn. At last, one of these Dan Brown novels gives the character of Robert Langdon a worthy adversary, a worthy cause, a worthy romantic interest, and worthy obstacles of the mental, physical, and intellectual variety to overcome. So yeah, I sort of recommend it. But please, seriously, no more. We're, we're done with these movies now, right? That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. 
and click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Inferno in the comments as well. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or were you kind of, eh, okay. Either way, let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you should go to the Inferno. Here we go now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you should go to the Inferno.